So we seem to have a pretty good model of the whole universe here. It fits all the data quite nicely. Uh, is there anything missing, though? Well, Paul, the one thing that's bugging me is it seems to me that everything we've talked about, you should be able to make it all happen in reverse the same way that things are going forward. So it seems to me that we're missing something about the fact that the universe marches forward. That is, the arrow of time goes one direction towards the future. Yes, and all the laws of physics we've got here are reversible. You could do, run them in reverse. But if you actually look at the, the universe around us, uh, I've run some clips backwards. You don't see this happening very often. Uh, water turning into ice cubes, a ball spontaneously jumping off the table. Be useful. Yeah. People being flung out of a swimming pool onto diving boards by the water. So what's going on here? This is, this is a situation where if you play it in reverse, it looks silly. Yeah, so clearly we have a, uh, an arrow of time in physical laws. So I think maybe we need to think a little bit about this more deeply. Now, as we probably know, this is thought to come from the second law of thermodynamics from the concept of entropy. And entropy is loosely described as chaos. And so in popular culture, entropy is supposed to be turning order into chaos things fall apart, disintegration happens. Yeah, I think one person's chaos is another person's order, possibly. So if we think about this a little more detail, is this ordered? Is the cosmic microwave background order or chaos compared to, for example, the modern universe? I mean, it seems a bit of a paradox. If you take the, uh, the popular version of turning order into chaos, our universe almost seems to be going in reverse. Yeah. We start off with just a random wilderness of gas molecules heading in random directions, and that then turned into highly structured things like galaxies and stars and nebulae, much yeah. less uniform, much more structured than it was to begin with. And then these in turn, turn via solar system formation, evolution into life forms such as this. Yes. So, Highly sophisticated. So do we think the queen is chaos? Or do we think she is, you know, very refined and orderly? So, so this um, section we're going to be talking about the arrow of time and does the universe actually bucket? Are we going from chaos into order in contradiction to this? Is there something different in cosmology from the normal day-to-day -day life? Or is there actually some way in which uh, this is far more chaotic than a random microwave background? And to start off with, let's deal with the simplest case of entropy, which is heat equalization. This is the classic example of this. Let's say you have two metal blocks, and one is hot and one is cold. And you put them next to each other, in a vacuum, so they're not exchanging any heat with anywhere else, what will happen? Well, it's pretty clear. I think we all know that the hot block and the cold block are going to become the same temperature, more or less the same temperature if they're made out of the same material. And yes, so the, the heat will size. move from the hot one to the cold one until they end up at yep. the same temperature. Whereas if you put two equal temperature blocks together, you never get heat sucked out of one into the other to make one uneven. So this is the simplest example of an arrow of time. So let's see if we can actually understand what causes this? So to understand this heat equalization, we have to understand what heat is. So in a solid, here's a, a model of atoms in a solid, and you've got the atoms, and the orange springs are like the chemical bonds that hold them together. In this case, it's a nice rectangular crystal lattice, but the same thing applies to other sorts of crystal and other shapes. And what heat is, is just the energy of motion. In fact, the heat energy is roughly half from the kinetic energy of the particles and half from the potential energy in the springs. Right. So everything is vibrating around here and sort of being held together by the motion compared to everything else. And if we were to heat this material up, it would start moving more and more and we'd get more and more bouncing. Yes. So the model we're going to use is another one of Einstein's models. That guy gets everywhere. Yep. And the idea here is that we'll treat an atom as being in a box. So we'll ignore the collective motions of the things and just treat it as being able to oscillate in three axes. So it can go x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Okay. And that's, not, that's too simple a model. It would, for example, preclude sound waves moving through things. But this model will get us a long way to treat every atom as being independent. So what this means is, in each axis, it's going to behave like what we call a harmonic oscillator. You may have done simple harmonic motion in school physics. And it's like a single atom on something on a spring, sliding backwards and forwards. And for something like this, you can do the potential energy, which is the energy in the chemical bonds of the springs, against position. And it has lowest energy when it's in its equilibrium position. But you can move it away from there. But you have to push to do it, put energy in. And what would normally work in the classical picture is, let's say you have an atom up here, a lot of potential energy. 
it'll start moving down towards the bottom. Potential energy will go down, but therefore kinetic energy has to go up, so it'll start moving faster. So down here, the, potential, the kinetic energy will have to be up here to balance it out, so the energy will remain constant, so it turns into kinetic energy, then it will run up the other side and turn back into potential energy, and so it will oscillate backwards and forwards. Potential to kinetic, potential, kinetic, and so on. So if you do bungee jumping, you're more or less, you're going to be moving down here. This is... Uh at uh, you know when you're jumping off things it's also the same uh, effect of a clock uh, when you have a pendulum and stuff it's all more or less can be described in the same way that's the classical picture but we have to look at the quantum mechanical picture here now we talked about this in the violet universe course at some length um, but to put, put summarize briefly um, the atom is actually a probability wave a quantum mechanical wave much like a, a violin string or a sound wave trapped in an organ pipe and it has to have a node a zero at both ends, and it means you can only oscillate in certain frequencies. You can have one frequency, which is the fundamental, which is where you just go up in the middle and down. You can have a second next harmonic, which goes two wiggles, and you can have three, four, five, and so on wiggles. And the more wiggles you have, the more energy your particle has. Yes. So in quantum mechanics, instead of being able to have any energy up here, it can only have discrete energies. This one, this one, this one, this one. It turns out for a harmonic oscillator, they're actually equally spaced. Very convenient. So you can have one quantum, two quanta, three quanta, but you can't have one and a half or two and a half quanta. It's, it's all fixed. And for a normal pendulum or bungee jumping, the same thing applies, but these quanta are so close together you'd never even possibly conceivably notice. But when you're talking about a single atom, these things are actually far enough apart it makes a real difference.